Today, I will be diving into the Stakeholder Specific Vulnerability Categorization, also known as SSVC, one of my favorite topics. SSVC was developed by Carnegie Mellon University's Software Engineering Institute in collaboration with CISA. And I think it's a revolutionary approach to vulnerability management that can help organizations get alignment with different stakeholders that might have different perspectives within their organization. And today, during this video, I'm going to hop into Carnegie Mellon's version of SSVC at a high level. We'll talk about CIS's adoption of SSVC. Then we'll highlight a paper I wrote about how to automate decision trees and vulnerability prioritization using the core concepts of stakeholder-specific vulnerability categorization. And lastly, I'm going to talk through a real-world example and adoption of SSVC uh, in some of the research published by Chris Madden at Yahoo. So first, let's understand the foundation of SSVC. In 2019, a team of experts led by Jonathan Spring published the paper, Prioritizing Vulnerability Response, a Stakeholder-Specific Vulnerability Categorization. This paper introduced SSVC as an alternative to the common vulnerability scoring system, CVSS. Just so happens that that's how you spell CVSS backwards. And it addressed the limitations of CVSS in vulnerability management. More recently in 2021, they released version two of this paper. The paper highlights the need for an improved prioritization method that accommodates the diversity of stakeholders in vulnerability management. SSVC takes the form of decision trees designed for different vulnerability management communities. The decision trees represent crucial elements of a decision, possible values and outcomes, making it practical and widely applicable. I think it's really interesting because this can help organizations in getting alignment across the organization on how they're making decisions related to vulnerability management and prioritization. Here's an example of a decision tree provided by Carnegie Mellon in their white paper. This is specifically a suggested supplier tree. And you can see here the decisions that they're using in order to come to a conclusion on what action to take. They start with exploitation, then they look at utility, technical impact, and public safety. And the outcome is on the right side as far as what actions to take, whether immediate action is necessary, out of cycle patch, a scheduled um, patch, or something should be deferred. So this really helps from a logic perspective. I think one of the difficulties that I'll talk about as we get into the paper that I wrote is having common understanding of terminology and knowing that this was created primarily for large federal government use cases. As I mentioned earlier, SSVC was created as a collaboration between Carnegie Mellon's Software Engineering Institute and the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, also known as CISA. CISA recognized the potential for this innovative approach and have adopted this within their vulnerability management program. In 2020, CISA developed its own customized SSVC decision tree tailored to the needs of the United States government, state government, local government, tribal government, and territory governments, as well as critical infrastructure entities. The decision tree built by CISA is a modification to the original SSVC decision trees in Carnegie Mellon's white paper. The decision tree allowed CISA to prioritize relevant vulnerabilities into four possible decisions, tracked, tracked asterisk, attend, and act. Each decision was based on five critical values that you can see in the SSV decision tree. Exploitation status, technical impact, whether the vulnerability is automatable, the mission prevalence of the vulnerability, and the public well-being impact. I think the use of this terminology is interesting, and it's pretty evident that this terminology is most relevant to government entities. Now that I've provided an overview of Carnegie Mellon's version of SSVC, as well as CISA's adoption of SSVC, I'd like to dive into the white paper I released recently on how you can automate vulnerability prioritization using decision trees aligned with SSVC. 
The reason why I created this paper is because the versions created by Carnegie Mellon and CISA are predominantly focused on large scale government use cases. And my belief is that you need to adapt for each organization on the commercial side, the decision criteria based on the organization's need and alignment of risk tolerance. So in this guide I created, the first thing I highlight is that you have to be able to define decision criteria, building decision tree rules for automation and measuring vulnerability outcomes. And you should take a reiterative approach. I also highlighted five important dependencies. Now, I think before I hop into these dependencies, I just want to highlight, start with where you can and reiterate. That's what's most important. You might not be able to have everything up front, but start with the information that you have. The dependencies that I think are important, specifically the first is alignment across an organization. If you don't have organizational alignment on how you're making decisions, and what the priorities of different vulnerabilities are, that's gonna be a real struggle and challenge within your vulnerability management program. The next thing is you have to have vulnerability and asset inventory. Now, this could come from disparate tools and you might have to start with, with that, but you certainly want a central repository of vulnerability and asset inventory so you can take automated actions against it in your decision-making process. Next, you need reliable sources of vulnerability intelligence. It's great to start with something like CISAKEV and EPSS, but I also wanna highlight the importance of commercial threat intelligence and expanding out just beyond free and available sources. That's one thing near and dear to our heart at Nucleus is we've incorporated Mandiant threat intelligence for all customers at no additional cost. Next, for more sophisticated decision-making, asset metadata correlation can be important so you can make decision criteria based on different asset attributes. And lastly, you need some way to automate these capabilities at scale. And that's one of the things that Nucleus allows organizations to do is to get automation rules in place so you can automate these decisions effectively. One thing I do want to highlight is once you work down the decision trees, I think there's an important aspect that comes to mind as well, which I'll highlight uh, and update the white paper on, which is exceptions handling. The reality is, is once the decisions get made on prioritization, a lot of times there's different reasons why a vulnerability might not be able to be remediated and the organization might take a risk exception or uh, handle an exception in different ways. To enhance our understanding and navigation of the decision-making process, visualizing the vulnerability decision tree is crucial. I think that data visualizations are very important to be able to have a shared understanding and discussion with stakeholders. So that's one thing I love with SSVC is the logic-based decision tree that can be made into a visualization. Each node in the tree represents a decision criteria, while branches represent possible values or outcomes for that criteria. The tree helps prioritize vulnerabilities based on specific decision criteria and streamlines the vulnerability management process within an organization with alignment with all stakeholders. One thing to keep in mind is you might have different decision trees for different stakeholders and different use cases. So to quickly walk through this basic decision tree, right? First, we start with exploitation. Is it actively being exploited? Is there a proof of concept or none? Next, we can look at asset exposure. This could be based on something as simple as an IP address, whether it's external or internal. And then last, I have asset criticality, high, medium, low. If you don't have asset context, that's okay. You can start as simple with a decision tree of just exploitation based on threat intelligence, right? Once decision criteria are defined, organizations should measure the number of vulnerabilities that map to each decision outcome. It's likely that there's gonna be a backlog of vulnerabilities. I think it's really important also that you make these outcomes reasonable to start as you don't wanna overwhelm the people in the organization that are responsible for remediation. I created the SSVC Vulnerability Prioritization Pyramid to help have discussions with key stakeholders 
on resource allocation and also how many vulnerabilities are mapping to each outcome. This really helps from a discussion perspective. And this is a real world example of an organization with roughly 60,000 assets using the decision criteria in our decision tree that I provided in the guide. Chris Madden recently did a talk at B-Sides Dublin and conducted some amazing research on vulnerabilities at Yahoo, resulting in the adoption of SSVC in a risk-based prioritization decision tree. Chris's work incorporated various critical factors for decision-making criteria, such as the National Vulnerability Database, CVSS metrics, EPSS, CISACAB, and several other considerations. This comprehensive approach allowed him to build a decision tree that addressed real-world challenges and prioritized vulnerabilities effectively at Yahoo. By implementing SSVC beyond the criteria that CISA used, Chris's work offers an inspiring and promising approach for other organizations to consider when determining their own decision criteria for vulnerability management. His work showcases the versatility and adaptability of SSVC in diverse environments, demonstrating its potential to really help revolutionize vulnerability prioritization. I found many things interesting about the considerations within Chris's decision tree. For instance, the bug bounty program at Yahoo is categorized as active exploitation, which actually makes a lot of sense. Someone external from the organization is reporting a known vulnerability. So they treat that as active exploitation. And I assume once they triage it, then they can associate other criteria that might make it a different priority. But someone's going to have to triage that vulnerability that comes in from that program. So just kudos as far as the criteria. I suggest checking the tree out itself. Uh, You can find it on Chris's GitHub. So in summary today, I was able to cover Carnegie Mellon's initial paper on stakeholder specific vulnerability categorization. I then talked about CIS's adoption of SSVC, the guide I created on how to automate SSVC decision trees, and then Chris Madden's real world implementation of SSVC at Yahoo. I think it's really important to note SSVC decision trees provide a scalable and systematic approach to vulnerability prioritization. Organizations can align vulnerability management with risk tolerance and strategic objectives, enhancing the efficiency and effectiveness of their vulnerability management programs. I really appreciate you taking the time to learn about stakeholder specific vulnerability categorization. And if you're interested in engaging with me more, please comment on the video and post and feel free to reach out to me anytime for meaningful discussion in the vulnerability management space. Thanks and have a great day.